Hey everyone, Darren here. Uh, just gonna give you a walkthrough in terms of the workflow that I use to export a file into Carbide Motion and then cut uh, on the Carbide 3D CNC mill. And so for those of you that aren't familiar with the Nomad 883, it's a an awesome desktop mill. Uh, I just received mine from a company, Carbide 3D. Uh, here's their website, uh, definitely check it out if uh, you're looking for one of the best, in my opinion, desktop CNC mills on the market. Okay, so how do you actually go about um, developing a file, exporting it to the program is called Carbide Motion that runs the mill? How do you go about doing that? Well, let me share with you what my workflow is. So uh, two things you're gonna need right off the hop. You're gonna need to download uh, MeshCam. You get a license, it's bundled with the Nomad 883 when you purchase it. Uh, you're gonna have to download MeshCam and also download Carbide 3D, and I'll leave links to both of those in the comment section below the video. So let's go ahead and open up MeshCam. Okay, so uh, this is MeshCam, and this is something that I just learned, but in terms of running a file on a CNC machine, you can't just take any old file and put it into Carbide Motion, which I'll, I'll show you this. You can't just put any file into the Carbide Motion. You have to uh, basically create a G code file, which is the language that the CNC machine understands. You have to create a G code file first. So in order to do that, you're gonna use a program like MeshCam. And so let me walk you through an example and, and I'll share with you what the outcome of that was uh, at the end. So here I am in MeshCam and let me just, here I am in MeshCam. Um, I'll go through some of the settings on the left here, but first things first, uh, I'm just gonna open a file. There's a number of different options here. Quite frankly, I haven't gone through all of them, uh, just the file open. So file open. Here's the file I'm gonna use, just gonna click on open. Now what MeshCam, at least my understanding of what MeshCam is saying is based upon the size of that file or the size of that image, uh, it looks like it's eight inches by six inches by five inches. Uh, you can change to millimeters. I'm gonna leave it at inches. I'm not too worried about what the size of this is because I can modify that later. I can make it larger, I can make it smaller. Uh, one thing I've noted that is if you have a file that's quite large, it may ask you if you want to um, make it smaller. Sure, go ahead, because once it's uh, in MeshCam, you can easily adjust the size of the file. So I'm gonna click OK. Uh, so you see here the image just popped up. It's of a three-dimensional duck. So what MeshCam is now asking me is, is this a three-axis job or is this two-sided machining? So I don't wanna do a two-sided machining. Um, when I figure out how to do that, I can do a, a tutorial on it, but I'm gonna say that it's three-axis, okay? So what you can do, uh, let me just kind of move the image around. You can um, zoom in, zoom out. I can just click on the mouse and I can move it around to sort of take a look at the image in three-dimensional space. Kind of cool. Um, okay, so a couple things I want to do first. So first thing I want to do is define the stock size that I'm going to be using. And the stock size is essentially, in my case, it's the size of the piece of wood that I want to cut this particular image on, in this case, the duck. <clears throat> so on the left here, toolpath, I'm gonna click the first option. It says define stock, so I'm gonna click that. Now you'll see that the default options that have been uh, pre-populated here, these are based upon the size of the image that you've imported. But I wanna change that because the stock that I'm gonna be using to cut this duck onto is actually a small block. It's a hardwood, maple hardwood wooden block. It's 1.75 inches cubed. So what I'm gonna do is enter those into the X, Y, and Z in terms of what size my stock is. Uh, I'm gonna click on lock stock dimensions. I'm not sure why I'm doing that, but that seems to work. Uh, as we go down, we're gonna be changing and manipulating some of these other options in a moment, but I'm gonna click OK. Okay, so now what you can see is this white, it's kind of covered, but this white outline. Now, what that is, actually when I click, you can see there's the block that I've defined in terms of size. You can see that the duck, the image in this case, is a whole lot larger than my stock. So what I need to do now is match the size of the image to the size of my stock. 
and I'm not sure of the actual best way to do this. This is just the way that I've been experimenting, but I'm going to click on geometry and scale geometry. So here, uh, if you want to keep it uniform, you can. Um, if you don't, it's just like resizing a photo. It, it may stretch or uh, shrink the image. I'm going to keep it uniform. I'm going to say that I want this to be um, half the size that it is now. So I'm going to click OK. All right, well, I see a couple things happen there. Obviously, it's getting smaller, but now it moved it off center. So uh, this has kind of been a back and forth thing that I've done, and, and perhaps there's a better way to do this. If so, please leave a, a note in the comments. But what I'm going to do now, though, just to show you the process, and this is going to happen a couple times, I'm going to click on Define Stock again. Now you'll see here X, Y position and Z. This is actually where the image is placed upon the stock. So for example, I'm going to click Center X, Center Y. Okay. Now you'll see that the image is centered on the block, but it's still too large. So I'm going to go back to scale geometry again. I'm not sure if there's a setting, perhaps that you can just click that automatically sizes it, but this is what's worked, I guess, okay for me. Okay, now we're getting closer. So I'm just going to center X and center Y again. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here. So by the way, if you want to move the image around in MeshCam, you hold control, at least on a Mac, hold control, click on the image, and then you can move it. Uh, it, it to me, I was trying to figure out how to do it <clears throat> just on the mouse pad. You can't, you have to click control. Okay, so we're very close. Again, I don't know if this is the best way to do it. Um, click scale geometry again, P pretty close. I'm gonna say 0 0.8 maybe. Okay, so that looks pretty good actually. So again, gonna click on define stock. I'm gonna center on X and center on Y. Click okay, good. So now let's move this around. Uh, and you can see here that in terms of uh, three dimensional space, this particular duck, this image is right in the middle of the block. So if I were to machine this, uh, looking down from the top of a block, uh, this is what we'd see. And actually that's what I want. I do wanna machine this profile. But the issue is that I don't want it placed in the middle of the block. I actually want it placed at the top. So I'm going to go back to define stock and here are the Z position. So X, Y, that's along the one dimensional space. Z position, that's the two dimensional space, I believe. So I'm going to define zero, meaning that I want this particular image to be at the top of the stock, or at least to start. Um, where the top of the stock is. So I'm going to click. You'll see here that the duck has moved to the top of the stock, or in this case, the top of the block. So if I look from top down, this is actually the profile that would be cut out. Uh, but from the side, you know, a couple things. Obviously, on these, where the curves come in, I'm not going to be able to machine that. Uh, because this is only a, a three axis machine. It's not a four axis or five axis machine. So what I want to do is tell MeshCam that I want the machining to stop right in the middle of the duck here. So what I need to do now is define the maximum depth that I want to cut. So that's this option right here, set max depth. So the default option here um, is it's going to cut to a maximum depth of 1.75 inches. My, my guess is that that's based upon the stock size. That's what's automatically entered. But I let's say let's take it down to 0 0.5 just to see what happens. OK, so now you'll see that when I did that, this little red line, uh, what that denotes is actually the maximum machining depth. So I'm just going to turn the model around uh, and you'll see here that that's just about right. Um, obviously, I can't machine anything uh, where the model starts to curve down. I can't machine any of that. So this is just about right. Okay, so um, I guess that's sort of part one. That's sizing and placing your image or your file onto your stock. Now, the second part is actually developing a tool path. So there's two ways to do this. Uh, one is tools and run carbide auto toolpath and uh, what that is at least my understanding of what that is is carbide knowing the machine they can automatically develop the best toolpath based upon uh, the machine parameters um, there's another way to do it as well uh, down here if you click on the uh, generate toolpath you're going to see a, a box that opens 
Uh, now, I'm not going to get into all the details of this in particular. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is just show you the process of running the auto tool path that Carbide sets up. So quite simply, I'm just going to click on Tools, Carbide Auto Tool Path. Here it's saying it's free form. It's recognizing that. It's going to act me, ask me for the material I'm using. In this case, I'm using hardwood. Uh, what cutter I'm using. So 101 to 11, 12, these are cutters that Carbide sells. So they're preloaded into MeshCam. You can definitely add new cutters. That's not something that I've done yet. Perhaps that'll... It's something for a future tutorial, but in this case, I'm going to use the uh, 101.125 inch uh, ball mill. Here you can ch uh, choose faster machining, higher quality. I'm going to leave it on higher quality. Review tool path settings. I do want to do that. So I'm going to click OK. So this is going to show all the different parameters. And again, there's a lot of information in here that you, you do need to be aware of. For example, on a roughing cycle, how fast do you want the machine to feed and plunge? Likewise, uh, cut along X, Y, X, and Y. Do you want water line? Do you want pencil cleanup? Incidentally, it's, it's interesting. You can select and deselect some of these options, and it's going to have an impact on your machining time, obviously. The less operations, the less machining time. I think this is something that's worthwhile to experiment with. Uh, myself, I've played a little bit with the feed rates and the plunge rates. So the feed rate that I found works well, at least with the hardwood, is uh, approximately 40. Uh, I'm going to leave the plunge rate as is. I'm going to change this feed rate as well to 40. Uh, just because I've noticed that the machine moves pretty fast at 75. And in terms of the bit, it's really wailing against the hardwood. So I, I wanted to slow that down. Uh, I'm going to leave everything else as is. I'm going to click OK. Now it's just going to take a couple seconds to develop the toolpath. Okay, so the toolpath is done. I'm just going to move this off to the side. So you can still move the model around, which I'm going to do here to show you. So you'll see here one important thing. Uh, I've set the maximum cut depth to 0 0.5 inches. You'll see there that no cuts are going to go below that, which is good because that's the maximum depth. Uh, on the top, you're, you're seeing red, blue, green, so what I'm going to do here on the left, I'm going to uncheck all of these options here. Okay, so now what you can do actually is go through the different uh, machining passes by clicking here. So I'm going to click on rough. So this is what the roughing path would look like. And you know, you can zoom in if you wanted to take a closer look at how that operation works. Uh, waterline finishing. So I'm going to zoom in here again. You can take a look to see uh, all around the model what impact that particular operation is going to have on it. The parallel finish and the pencil finish. So one of the things you want to be sure of is you have to recheck all of these lines. Otherwise, when you save the toolpath, it's only going to save what's checked. So um, I'm going to check them all. I'm going to click Save Toolpath. Now it's going to ask me what I want to call it. I'm going to save that. Now the, the G code file that runs Carbide Motion has been saved. And unfortunately this time I can't share with you the next part of the process because uh, a wire came loose on my machine. I'm just waiting for a replacement. But uh, essentially what you do, you connect the cutter, you load the file. There's a couple of different operations that or steps you need to take, and then uh, the machine will start cutting. Now what I'm going to do is cut from the tutorial and show you how the blocks turned out. Thanks for watching.